Hey, YouTubers. Um, I think the people, uh, sorry, I think the reason that people have enjoyed my channel and my ministry is because I try to be real with you. So I'm being real with you right now. Real alert. Real alert. Caution, real content ahead. I'm in my garage, by the way. Uh, if it looks junky, it's because it's been winter and I haven't had time to do anything. But now I'm out here doing stuff. <laughs> God just God just touched me in a way that just really hit home. Because I've been having a hard time. Um, you know, 322, the whole, uh, you know, Obama visit and all that. Uh, while I didn't declare that it was going to be, you know, this or that, I had high expectations of, you know, maybe seeing something. And I'm not saying that something didn't happen. I'll get to that in a minute. But I have to say that I've been kind of like let down, feeling like, you know, when, Lord, when? You know, we get all these things that are saying, sudden destruction, sudden destruction. And I was just talking to my bro, Steve. And, uh, you know, right at, on, actually, I think on March 22nd, he's got really sharp discernment. And he just said that, you know, I feel like the Lord told me that I don't do things on the Illuminati timeline. You know, read Psalm 2. You know, God laughs at those that have all these plans. Um, actually, I got that verse this morning. Now I think about it. So, I'm just being straight with you. You know, I had expectations. I kind of feel let down. But at the same time, Obama gave his speech over there. The, uh, you know, the whole peace and security speech. Watch it here if you haven't seen it. And I feel like that is a literal interpret or a literal fulfillment of First Thessalonians five three, where he was in Jerusalem, talking to Israel, telling them his peace and security plan. So I believe, according to that verse, it is now the go ahead for the sudden destruction. Look at this junk over here. So I'll be straight with you. You know, I'm a human. I'm not a perfect you know, Christian. I don't have everything straight. I struggle, all right? But I'm real with you. And I've been I've been really fighting uh this last week where my flesh is trying to run the show because I don't know, I just feel like things have been tough, you know? Well Here's the deal. The Lord's really, you know, in the last several weeks been talking to me about, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Or love your neighbor as yourself. And, uh, you know, I've tried to do that. I had somebody that uh, really did me wrong. You know, they, uh, my ex-wife, okay? My ex-wife really did me wrong, and I, I'm not talking about this to get your recognition. I'm not talking about this to get your praise. You know, me and God already dealt with this. But she had some issues, uh, asked me to, you know, pay the only bill that I still share with her because, you know, she'd been out of work for something. So without... Any argument, I paid her part of the bill, and I told her, you know, look, I'm praying for you. That's hard to do. But you reap what you sow, okay? That's, that's the general message here. You reap what you sow. What you give is what you get. Uh, I think it's out of Proverbs, maybe 11. There's a verse that says that if you need to be watered, you should be watering. You know, if you need something from the Lord, like I feel like I need. 
I don't know. I feel like I need deliverance from some issues, you know, whether it's like fear of man. Uh, you know, I have a hard time. You know, I can talk to you people because however many hundreds, thousands, whatever, see me, all I'm looking at is a camera. So this is easy for me to talk to a camera. But for me to talk to somebody face to face and witness and do that kind of stuff, a lot of times fear kind of overrides and I don't like that. So I want deliverance from that. But in order to reap it, you got to give it to somebody else. If you need healing, you know, I would go lay hands on somebody else and pray for their healing. Because you reap what you sow. So, I'm not going to run too long here. But I'm going to tell you that I reap today because I've been trying to sow. And if I'm if I'm emotional, again, real alert, I'm just being real. I was on the phone with my bro, Steve, that I told you about. And uh you know, my neighbors, I got I got neighbors next door. One of them is the attorney the attorney for the county. And in the past, I haven't been that cool with him. You know, I've kind of felt like he's snooty, prideful, whatever. And I've kind of, you know, kept my distance. But I think they are aware that I'm now divorced. And yesterday, uh, the wife, you know, Madeline, brought me two Popeyes. And I loved them. <laughs> I put them in my oven, I cooked them up, and I loved them. And today, uh, she brought me this big thing of like Italian, uh, it's got like hamburger and pasta and I don't know, here it is. Have a look. It's in my garage. <laughs> I'm going to put this in my fridge. Hold on. Look at that. I'm going to eat that. Sorry my garage is crazy, but I'm working. Um, so she hands me that. I was on the phone with Steve and she hands me that. And as I started to bring it back, you know, I kind of started choking up. And I said, hey, Steve, my neighbor just brought me some dinner. And it's, it's huge. And my neighbor, when she gave it to me, she said, you know, I'm feeling sorry for you. They haven't said a word about me being divorced, but they know. So I put it here on the table. And when, when Steve said God is good, it was like God was saying God is good. Even though I'm struggling, God loves me. Even if you're struggling, God loves you. I told God, look, even if the road is hard, even if I make bad decisions, I want you to direct my steps. Even if I do things wrong, I still want you to be the Lord of my life. Even if I rebel against you, I still want you to to lead me in the way that I should go. So I'm just being real. Even if you're struggling, Jesus loves you. Even if you're rebelling, Jesus loves you. You know, last thing I'll say, um, and this is this is prophecy. Everybody, everybody wants some prophecy. Uh, yesterday, I went to a, a shop to get my Toyota aligned. And uh, for some reason, it took them five hours. It's supposed to take an hour, hour and a half. It took them five hours. And while I was sitting there, I was reading about all this North Korea stuff. North Korea is making nuke threats against America. America has flown over B-52s saying, look, we can wipe you out. And the reason that my bro Steve called was because his discernment says, this looks legit. This looks like it's going to produce. This looks like something's going to happen. And I feel the same way. So I think the time has come. I think because Obama was over there giving the peace and security speech to Israel, telling them, you know, acting like their Messiah, 
you know, Jesus said in John 5, 43 or something, some, somewhere close to there, he said, you know, I come in my Father's name and you do not receive me, but if another comes in his own name, you receive him. Well, that's Obama. Look at what he did over there. They received him like some kind of Messiah. You know, instead of turning to God, Israel has said, hey, Obama, we need you to, you know, bring our peace, bring our security. You know, we need your Iron Dome and your and your money and your, uh, you know, military support and your your diplomacy and your peace talking and all that stuff. They received him like a Messiah. You know, gave him a medal of distinction. Uh, you know, did a did a um, ice sculpture. They didn't do an ice sculpture for Jesus. I guess you couldn't do it back then. No refrigerators, you know, no freezers. But, uh, you know, they received him like some kind of Messiah. And I believe that is a total offense to God the Father. Because God the Father sent his Son for their salvation. They rejected the Son of God. And now they're receiving a man who's been lying to them, who's been disrespecting them, who's been treating them like garbage. Yet they receive him like some kind of Messiah. So, I don't really know what happened on 322, if anything. You know, I think I think just the fact that Israel received him like a Messiah, because it was his first visit there in his presidency, I think that alone by itself is a total abomination to God. If you look up the definition of abomination, sorry, abomination, habit, Abomination means something detestable, something reprehensible, something disgusting. And the way that Israel received Obama, in God's eyes, was disgusting, reprehensible. So, um, I just feel like, I understand where God's coming from, you know, like I think about all the all the Christians that are like, you know, Lord, I want to get out of here. I want to go home. I'm tired of this world. This place is just getting wicked. And uh, I want to go home to be with you. You know, John uh, 14, 2 and 3. Jesus said, I go to my father's house. Uh, you know, in my father's house, there are many mansions. And if I go, I will receive you unto myself. You know, that where I am, you may be also. When, if if it's a post-trib rapture, when does that happen? When do you go up into a mansion if there's a post-trib rapture? I don't even care about a rapture debate. If you want to have a rapture debate, have it all by yourself. I believe what I believe. But I know a lot of people want to go home. I know a lot of people want to go be with Jesus. But I want you to also think that on that same day, millions could die. Jesus said in, uh, I want to say it's Luke 17, you know, like it was in the days of Lot, like it was in the days of Noah. The day that Lot left Sodom and Gomorrah, it rained fire and brimstone. That's what we're looking at. So the day that you go home to be with Jesus, you know, Second Peter says that, uh, you know, uh, the day the Lord comes like a thief and the elements will melt with fervent heat and all that. So when Jesus comes, there's going to be fervent heat down here. Nukes. So, you know, I put up a Facebook status, and this is what I'll leave you with. I'm not going to run any longer. Uh, make sure that when Jesus comes, you bring some friends with you to meet him. Because that's what this life is supposed to be all about. You know, if you get the truth, you're supposed to share it with somebody. You're supposed to wake somebody else up. I'll just keep it to yourself. So, pray for me if you would. You know, this being a watcher thing ain't easy. Anybody that says being a Christian is easy ain't doing it right. <laughs> the path is narrow, and few be there, few there be that find it. Praise Jesus.
Oh, happy Easter and uh, happy Resurrection Day. Forget all that Easter stuff. The reason I'm living is because he's risen.